This New Year's afternoon, I decided to try and make a log antenna, that is, a loop on the ground. I had read about these on various amateur radio websites over the years, and suddenly took the notion to give it a try. From what I'd read, these loop on ground antennas are good in noisy RF environments. Having not wired up any external antennas at my house shed and living in the suburbs, I decided the time had come. It may have been minus 19 degrees Celsius outside with a bunch of snow on the ground, but I was not going to be deterred. As you can see from the image, you need 15 feet of wire for each of the four sides, so I went rummaging around in the basement to see what I could find. Within about 30 minutes, I was receiving HF. Strap with, you know, and they launch it up over the tree with a, a weighted uh, string, you know. Join me as I show you how it was done. Mayday, America, 953, Well, I had a spool of uh, speaker wire. So I decided to use this spool. I didn't quite have 60 feet on here, but of course there's two sides. So I just pulled it apart and split the two sides. So uh, now I have 30 feet of the copper and 30 feet of the silver uh, wire. And all I'm gonna do now is just join them together. It's always better to use a single strand of wire for an application like this, but I just had to crimp these two together and try that. With the two ends joined together, I tested for continuity before heading outside to install the antenna. I grabbed an old tire and piece of wood from the side of the house, measured out 15 feet on the tip, and then grabbed an extra log to mark roughly a 45 degree position at 15 feet. Using a second item, I measured out 15 feet in the opposite direction, and then took my tape measure and measured out another 15 feet for the central top position. I wanted to make sure everything roughly balanced, so I moved things around a few more times, grabbed the actual wire, started in the top at the middle where my join was going to be, ran it to the start, grabbed the second piece of wire, connected it to the first piece, and then set about actually making the diamond shape with the antenna wire on the ground and running it back to the board where I had a Nualec ballon waiting. The Nualec 9 to 1 ballon is what I used to act as my transformer. So here I just screwed in the two pieces of the wire to the end, which was then connected to a Nualec 9 to 1 ballon. And I'm actually using the version 2 ballon here. I connected some RG6 coax to the feed point on the Nualec ballon, tidied up the coax a bit, and then thought I didn't like the spade or shovel because it had metal on it. So I replaced that with a terracotta flower pot. That way I could be sure there was no extra inductance. I placed some electrical tape around the connector just to keep some of the moisture out of it, and then hooked it around the flower pot to give me my 90 degree bend. From that position, I could see an approximate diamond shape of the loop on ground antenna, with the coax running towards the house. The final job was to cut my RG6 coax and install an F connector on the end, which would then be used to feed into an F to SMA connector and be hooked into my AirSpy HF Plus Discovery software defined radio. I grabbed my RTL SDR AM bandpass filter just to make sure I wasn't getting too much interference from local AM transmitters of which there are several close to my location. Then the receiving fun began. And uh, he came in well. Uh, well, you're both running about 5.9. I'm curious, uh, uh, curious what you're running. Uh, uh, I'm going uh, I'm, I'm, to it back to you because I'm uh, I'd like to hear what you have over uh, rubber strap with you know and they launch it up over the tree with a, a weighted uh, string you know they've got all kinds of stuff like it's called Jameson something uh, if you can I sent it to you a couple months back but I don't remember the name of it okay did you you changed the bob file did you remember to click on the bob file and uh, run it yeah I did that already well, uh, I, I don't know. I, I, I have to try that. I tried to uh, to run the whisper program. It doesn't. Uh, it comes up like trash talk. Good evening, Uh-huh. 
Roger. I was also able to receive a Volmet station from the Far East, although the signal wasn't clear enough to confirm the transmit location. This could have been Singapore, Bangkok, Australian or New Zealand Volmet. Another surprise was being able to pick up an Australian Coast Guard broadcast on 6507 kHz. This was my first time ever receiving this particular signal. Of course, the United States Coast Guard broadcasts came in a little stronger for me here in Western Canada, being transmitted from Norfolk, Virginia, on the Atlantic coast, on the opposite side of the country from me. Virginia LOP, Norfolk, Virginia, flash bell, 7572. 7583 flash email, FWC, Norfolk. Next, I removed the AM broadcast band filter to see if I'd be able to pick up any of the NDB signals in the LF band. Sure enough, the local ones were coming through loud and clear. Constructing this frugal log antenna didn't really cost me anything, as I already had all the parts lying around. However, I've placed some links in the description below in case you're starting from scratch. The new Elect Ballon costs 15 US dollars, or right around 15 UK pounds, but if you have the parts, you can make your own transformer. I used speaker wire, but you can easily pick up a 100 foot roll for under $15. You can also use cheap wire from a dollar store or any other spare wire you have lying around. I also keep a spool of RG6 coax on hand as I use it regularly for various radio projects. A new spool would set you back about 65 US dollars for 500 feet, and in the UK you can get 100 meters for just 15 pounds. The F connectors cost about $8 for a pack of 25, and in the UK you can pick them up in a pound shop for a couple of quid. Once again, thanks for watching the Frugal Radio channel. I'm glad you stopped by today. See you in the next episode. This is Frugal Radio, out. <coughs>